Welcome in to game 23 of the 2024 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by Pepe Silvia's true employer, Zappos. It's our second of three battles across three nights here in Savannah between the Bananas and Party Animals. After winning four straight at home to start the year, the Nanners have dropped the last two, and now the Animals have pulled within two as they try to keep the bats hot after a prolific offensive onslaught a night ago. We now look live at historic Grayson Stadium, which is looking absolutely scrumptious as ever in its 99th year of a stoic existence. And welcome up inside the broadcast booth alongside Josh Talevsky. I am Biko Scala. Thank you all so much for spending your Big Tiger Friday with us here in virtual Banana Land. Josh, the Bananas started red hot, four straight wins in Savannah. The Animals now have two in a row, and last night they put up a historic offensive performance. Yeah, it was quite the game for the party animals overall. We wound up seeing... 15 total runs for the party animals, which turned into six points for them, 19 total hits. And by the way, these guys also had seven trick plays in the game as well. So we saw them dominating a lot of facets of banana ball. And we're going to touch on the pitching from these guys in the pregame show a little later on. But overall, we saw a superb performance from Bryson Bloomer, who loves hitting here in Grayson Stadium, had the single game RBI record last night with six for the party animals. So they're looking to win a third straight ball game here in Grayson Stadium, but an interesting note. The Bananas come into tonight, and they're going to be wearing their white uniforms. They're 3-0 and in games in which they're donning the white unis. Sounds like an unstoppable force is running into an immovable object tonight. We'll see if the Nanners can stay undefeated in their home whites or if the party animals can make it three straight wins here in historic Grayson Stadium. Now, we have a juiceful broadcast on the docket tonight. It is Big Tiger Friday, so we wear some of our saucier shirts, but it is no coincidence that you're rocking the Bill Roy here. Uh, that is exactly right because we're going to have the Bananas backstop tonight, mic'd up behind the plate, and uh, Biko, you're going to get a little bit of a rest uh, uh, because Bill Leroy is going to be handling the play-by-play -play duties while he's on the field. Well, it can be a very tiresome job doing play-by-play -play for two straight hours across a banana ball game, give or take a minute or two or three or dozen, uh, but... Bill, who is, you know, just as good on the mic as anyone you can find. We've had him on the broadcast, up in the broadcast booth, on the field mic'd up before. Play-by-play -play comes naturally to him, so we're thrilled about that. We're going to have a Jenga game during the middle of the ball game between Ryan Cox and Jackson Olsen, the Bananas middle infielders. So that is going to be an absolute thrill, and uh, it's going to be a blast from start to finish tonight. The party animals going back to the opener after it worked for the first time it was ever used in banana ball history last night. Jake Lialios will play that role this evening. Ryan Kellogg on the bump for the, for the Bananas. We are thrilled to break the whole thing down, run through last night's highlights. We'll do that in a bit. We've got to get it down to Bill Leroy, who else, and the boys as it's Banana Baby O'Clock. I need you to get your spirit fingers high in the sky. Spirit fingers high in the sky. The vibes are high this evening. This tradition has brought the Bananas 1,212 wins, which is a number I just completely made up. Now coming to the mound, Tonight's Banana Baby! <laughs> Thor's is five months old and looking extremely calm considering the situation. But the vibes are high. The spirit fingers up, are up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for tonight's Banana Baby, Thor's! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please direct your attention to left center field. They're the wildest, craziest, sexiest, most outrageous group of animals you'll ever lay your eyes on. And they're here for just one reason, to party. Here come the party animals.
ready to meet the starting lineup for the party animals. Because it's time. Center fielder, Reese Hampton. The DH, Bryson Bloomer. Right fielder, Jake Skoll. The extra hitter, Dalton Cornett. At shortstop, Jay Zayka. Left fielder, Tanner Tinder Thomas. At third base, Jordan Hussein. Behind the plate, Brunson Bullhole. At second base, Dustin B -b 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 Paper. And at first base, Jason Swan. On the mound for your party animals, Jake Lealios. The party animals are managed by Mike Papa Papasis, assisted by Isaac Hess and Anthony. How you doing? Coramato. Ladies and gentlemen, now coming up to the plate with me is my dear friend, Emerson. Emerson is five years old and is gonna be attempting to hit a home run against these party animals. Go ahead and step in the box, Emerson. Yes, sir, looking good. He'll be facing pitcher Brett Helton today, trying to hit a home run. Pitch number one, stretches, fires, and a swing. And a miss, great swing, Emerson. We got one strike and it looks like Brett's doing a little celly there. Can we get a boo for Brett Helton? Boo. Taunting a five-year-old, come on, Brett. Emerson's ready for pitch two. He swings and a miss, that's two strikes. But here comes Split. Split's had enough, he pushes Dalton Cornett out of the way, places the tee on home plate, and now Emerson has got a fair fright. Let's make some noise for Emerson, here we go. Go for it, buddy. Woo! That ball's driven. That ball's driven. He's taking some time to admire it. And now he's headed. Oh, he's going. He's going to Brett. Oh, he's going to field his own hit. He's going to field his own hit. He's got the ball. And he throws it to Dalton Cornett. And Dalton throws it over to first base to Jason Swan. But he's not going to step on first base. There he goes now, heading on to first base. Keep on going, Emerson. And he's going back out to get the ball. I have never seen this before in all my years. It looks like he's gonna hit the ball again. And he fouls it off. Looks like Flash the Kid's giving him some base running lessons as they're about to head on over to first base. Let's make some noise. He Flash touches first base. Atta boy, Emerson. Oh, he's moving now. He's now going out to second base. That ball gets lost in the sun. Reese Hampton don't got it. Now they're going to third base. Oh, he's on his way. It's gonna be a close one at the plate. He's rounding third. Looks like there's gonna be a player play at the plate. And he is saved. Let's make some noise. fans, now it's time to learn the rules of banana ball. Rule number one, every inning counts. If you win the inning, you get a point. How do you win the inning? Score more runs than the other team. The final inning counts the most where every run counts for a point. Rule number two, we have nine innings or a two hour time limit unless, rule number three, if we're tied, it forces a one-on-one -on -one showdown tiebreaker. One hitter versus one pitcher and one fielder. Rule number four, there is no bunting because bunting sucks. If you bunt, you're thrown out of the game. Swing the bat. Rule number five, batters can steal first base. Rule number six, there are no walks in banana ball. Ball four is a sprint where the runner can go as far as they want until all nine fielders touch the ball. Rule number seven, batters may not step out of the batter's box. If they do, it's a strike. Rule number eight, there are no mound visits. Rule number nine, the banana ball challenge rule. Each team is allowed to challenge one umpire call a game. And for the first time ever in professional sports, you, the fan, can challenge one play. Please welcome our fan representative of the night, right down in front of the Shark Tank, Selene Meadows. Rule number 10, 
the golden batter rule. Once again, each team can put any hitter in their lineup in to hit at any spot. And finally, rule number 11, the most fans first rule of them all. Did you bring your glove tonight, Savannah? That's good, because if any of you fans catch a foul ball in this game, it counts for an out. And those are the rules of Banana Ball. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the player challenge. Tonight's challenge, a twerk off from the party animals, Connor Big Butter Higgins. And from your Savannah Bananas, Ethan Scoo These players are gonna twerk everything they have to get all of those balls out of their backside boxes. Fans, root them on. Three, two, one, go! Oh, it's a feverish pace. They're twerking like crazy. They're twerking. The winner is already decided, Ethan Scoochie. Now, ladies and gentlemen, direct your attention down that first baseline as we meet the cast of the 2024 Ball stuff World from the twerk off Tour. down below. We will take control of the pregame show once again. Welcome up into the broadcast booth, Josh Chalevsky, Biko Scala. It is nigh the time to get into last night's highlights. Control room, give us the goods. It was an absolute beatdown from the party animals against the Bananas. It all started pretty innocuously with a Bryson Bloomer sprint. Two batters into the game, and then now the Boomstick's coming out. Smack of a double from Skull. Chase Acuff gonna bring home Bloomer. Yeah, excellent piece of two strike, or two out hitting for Chase Acuff, leading that run for the party animals. And a little bit of an interesting run down there. Bananas were not able to get either runner during the situation, but fortunately, Noah Nisnik and the Bananas only give up a one run in the top half of the first inning as Rack would make the first backflip catch of his banana ball career and became only the fourth player in banana ball history to make a backflip catch. So nice, you get to see it thrice. Garrett DeClue puts a bow on the point earned with a flip himself. Acrobatics for the animals. They're up one point early. Now it's Reese Hampton earning the sprint. That will drive in a run as he grabs two bases on it. Reese Lightning racing all the way into second. And now Jordan Hussein, can you land the bottle flip? No, how about the table? That's going to be a no as well. And Bryson Bloomer, he wants to play some pepper with that big wall in center as well. DR, look out! That thing is much sturdier than you are, buddy. And we're on inside the park home run watch. Yeah, Bryson Bloomer getting a big wave from Mike Bavasis, who was coaching third base. Coming around in the play home, Bloomer sliding in safely. Only the third inside the park home run in Banana Ball history. The first true inside the park home run without an entertainment shift. Yeah, that's a fact. That is how the two inside the parkers happened last year. For Hampton, the man who just made that catch, and Noah Bridges for the Nanners. Reese Lightning covering a lot of ground, as he always does. So a 2-0 lead for the Animals. They're trying to extend it. Noah Fisher with the sack fly here as the throw comes into third. Acuff scores, and once again, he comes up empty on both flips. But the animal's not done in the inning. Dustin Baber trying to get that one into left. Knocked down by Cox, but the throw wild. Thomas scores, Hussein to third. A cup with redemption, and son of a gun, he did it. Doesn't get the table, that doesn't matter. The sixth time was the charm for Chase A cup and the party animals justifiably fired up about getting that bottle flip. And Connor Higgins justifiably fired up from this trick play double play. Chase A cup, Dustin Baber, and Jason Swan turning to there for the animals and connor higgins would get out of this third inning in just one minute and 48 seconds while reese hampton catches one behind the back his 10th trick play of the tour top of the fourth cowboy kyle lewicks freshly inserted into the game base hit from hampton base hit from bloomer and then skull brings them both in with his second double across the first four innings so reese hampton gets to play real life fruit ninja i've never seen anybody more excited to celebrate at home plate with a machete in my life meanwhile the party animals celebrating a fourth consecutive inning with the point 
Dustin Baber collecting his second trick play of the night. Nice piece of two strike hitting there from Bloomer once again. He grabs another knock, bringing in Swan, and Brett Helton lets that one run hold up. It is five points to zero, five innings in, and Brett's gonna break out an unreal boogie to celebrate. When your offense is backing you that well, if you're Brett Helton, you've gotta celebrate in ways like that. Here in the top of the sixth, the banana's best highlight of the night, and it starts with Cowboy Kyle getting one pitch and one out. Chase Acuff flying to DR Meadows in center field, and then Tanner Thomas comes to bat against Cowboy Kyle. We are on historic MPI watch, which is why you get to see the entire half inning as it happened last night. It's gonna be a three pitch at bat to Tanner Thomas. It's the third quickest inning in banana ball history. Just how fast will it be? You're about to find out. I don't know where that one missed, but it really doesn't matter. Cowboy Kyle working quickly, little scoop. Pitchers are athletes too. And this is where things start to get pretty serious because a hot shot to Eric Jones Jr. He grabs the trick play. Look at Cowboy Kyle hustling back to the mound. He knows what's at stake. And he knew that Eric Jones Jr. was encouraging him after that trick play. EJ was saying, go get yourself an MPI Kyle. Kyle justifiably running quickly to that mound to get out and throw another pitch. And he would face Noah Fisher with two outs here. You see the MPI at 102. And when this one comes down in the glove of DR Meadows in center field, one minute and eight seconds for Cowboy Kyle, the third fastest inning of all time in banana ball. And the fastest inning ever thrown in historic Grayson Stadium. Pretty apropos that the seven-year banana gets it done. The Richmond Hill kid put the party animals back on their nonsense. After a scoreless sixth, they played four in the seventh, and Baber with another trick play. The bounce to Aka gets stilts in plenty of time. And Bill LaRoy says, hey, we're not gonna get a goose egg. An unearned run on Helton after Crosby reached on a trick play. Missed, the Nanners officially on the board. And you see Brandon Crosby and Tyler Gillum celebrating that they were finally able to score a point there, riding off into the sunset. And in the ninth inning, the party animals trying to close the door on the bananas. Reese Hampton, his second behind the back trick play of the night. And then Helton strikes out DR Meadows for just the fourth time on the 2024 World Tour and would keep it going against Gabe Howell. He swings and misses, and it's a dominant 6-1 win from the boogieing Brett Helton <laughs> and the party animals. A lot of dancing for them, and this is how they did it from the pitching side. Garrett DeClue the opener, then Porter with a scoreless second inning, Connor Higgins a scoreless third, and Hilton pitched across six innings because of the walk-off, he gets credited with five. Well look, we talked so much about the offense last night, we really need to give the pitching of the party animals their due, and Garrett DeClue early on set the tone. Three up, three down, recorded a strikeout, got through the inning in less than three minutes. Meanwhile, Dylan Porter, 4.07, that's the time he needed to get through the second inning, but didn't allow any runs to the Bananas then. And Connor Higgins throwing the first sub two minute inning of his career, one minute and 48 seconds. And then the party animals turn it over to one of their best pitchers in their team's history. Brett Helton, five credited innings pitched across the last six and only gave up two runs, got five strikeouts. And the average time it took him to get three outs, two minutes and 35 seconds the Greek god of MPI for you. That's a fact right there. If you thought the highlight was ugly for the Nanners, take a look at the difference between the party animals average minutes per inning and the bananas as a staff last night. That is quite a stark difference. Yeah, the party animals averaged just two minutes and 42 seconds to get three outs per inning and seven of their eight credited innings were thrown in less than three minutes. Absurd. Just unbelievable stuff. The best performance we've ever seen from the animals as a whole. Meanwhile, the Bananas averaged almost six minutes per innings pitch. Not good. And two total innings they threw were recorded in less than three minutes, both of them belonging to Cowboy Kyle Lewis. And he just happened to sneak in the third fastest inning in Banana Ball history. Really helped that average. <laughs> yes, it did. Okay, let's take a look at the pitching matchup tonight. The Party Animals going back to the opener. They go to Jake Lealios for his first career. Banana Ball start for the Nanners. They are sticking with their big south pawn, Ryan Keller. Yeah, and the Party Animals have good reason to stick with the opener. It's really helped them in these last two games. And for Jake Lealios, the big thing that's helped him make an improvement, he just continues to pound the zone more than he did last year. Throwing way more strikes early in counts as well. Meanwhile, for Ryan Kellogg, a little bit of a slow start to this year's World Tour. The strikeout rate is down for him. And for Ryan Kellogg, he's also got to be a little wary of his 
sprint rates this season, and also the batters that he is hitting on the mound as well. We're mere moments away from first pitch. Let's get it down to the field for the banana starting lineup. The Doc M -M -M Meadows. Batting second and wearing number one, the catcher, Bill Leroy. Batting third at DH, number 19, Tan Oper. The cleanup hitter, extra hitter number seven, Michael Vitamin D. Batting fifth at third base, number 18, Danny Hosley. Batting sixth at first base, number three, Eric Jones. In right field, number two, Reese. Superman, Alexi Ade. In left field, number 15, Rack, Robert Anthony Cruz. At second base, wearing number eight, he is our greatest showman, Jackson Olsen. And at shortstop, number six, our glove magician, Ryan Cox. On the mound for your Savannah Bananas tonight, number 49, Ryan Killer. Your Savannah Bananas are managed by Tyler Gillum, assisted by Adam Pyro Pirant and Ray Ortega. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand if you're able and remove your hats here to honor America with the singing of tonight's national anthem. Please welcome Hannah McGarity. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light one so proudly we held through the twilight's light gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets Still there, oh, say, does that so spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the It is game 23 of the 2024 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by the original inventors of Fight Milk, our friends over at Zappos. The party animals have won two straight. They've pulled within two games of the Nanners at 10 and 12 on the year and look to make it three in a row from historic Grayson Stadium. Here's how the Nanners align defensively as they look to end the mini losing streak. From left to right in the outfield, Robert Anthony Cruz, D.R. Meadows, and Super Reese Alexiades. Third to first in the infield, you see Danny Hosley, Ryan Cox, Jackson Olsen, and Eric Jones Jr. The man with the mask is Bill Leroy, and on the bump is Ryan Kellogg. Ryan Cox had a pair of trick plays last night to extend his tour lead to 46 on this year's tour. 
His friend over there at second base, Jackson Olsen, collected his 22nd last night, which is already a new single season career high for Mr. Olsen. And by the way, these guys are going to be playing Jenga by second base very, very soon. Meanwhile, Danny Hosley, he's getting his first start at third base on the tour for the Bananas. Gabe Howell previously had all the others at the hot corner. And for Hosley, three straight games with the trick play. We'll see if he can make it four over there at third. Ryan Kellogg at the center of it all, perfect in his two trick play attempts. The big lefty has been a stalwart in the Bananas starting rotation. A five pitch mix, a professional out there in every respect. Seven years of minor league baseball in the Cubs organization. And making his seventh start of the season for the Bananas. And last time out, Ryan Kellogg unfortunately handed the loss, went three innings, gave up seven hits and two runs to the party animals, allowed a sprint and did not earn a strikeout. And that's what's really interesting for Kellogg. The strikeout rate has dipped for him this year by almost 10%. Meanwhile, his sprint rate is rising, and he has hit more batters this season in half the innings pitch compared to last year. And for Ryan Kellogg, he's got to get through the first inning. He hasn't recorded a first inning below five minutes since March the 9th in Houston, Texas. The reason why the first inning is so tough, not just for Kellogg, but any banana starter, is how brutal the party animals lineup is, especially at the top. Reese Hampton leads it off for the 23rd time on the tour. Behind him, Bryson Bloomer, then Jake Skoll, and cleaning it up is Dalton Cornett. Showtime indeed, Mr. Sharp. You get a good look at the Animals lineup there after the first four. It is A-Cup Thomas, Hussein, Ballholm, Baber, and Swan rounding it out. And we set our sights on one of the best hitters we have ever seen in banana ball history. Reese Hampton, 12th round draft pick in 2018, nabbed by the Detroit Tigers. In his third world tour, quickly behind 0-2. This is what you love for Kellogg is that one actually stayed in play. I didn't think Leroy or Jones had a chance at it. Turns out they did not. But Kellogg in the driver's seat. Yeah, good to see Ryan Kellogg get ahead of Reese Hampton, who is batting 400 against Kellogg on this year's World Tour. Has made quite the adjustment after Hampton kind of admitted last season. Kellogg, probably the toughest pitcher he's had to face in banana ball. Kellogg's so tough because, as I mentioned, a five-pitch mix, two-seam and four-seam fastballs. They're both in the low 90s. Nice snag by Danny Hosley. 360 across the diamond just in time to nab Hampton. And that is a heck of a play at the hot corner to kick things off. A gold glove type play for Danny Hosley in his very first defensive chance over at the hot corner. Made that one look real easy and an excellent throw over to Eric Jones Jr. to retire the Speedy Reese Lightning. Look out, Bryson Bloomer. After going four for five last night, a triple shy of the cycle, a banana ball record, six runs driven in for a player in a ball game. The tower is buzzed and it keeps him off his toes enough to sky it to Danny Hosley who catches that thing right in his back pocket. I don't know what our camera was looking at. It was not in the right place. We'll give you a replay so you can see what the ding just happened. Here you go. Danny Hosley with an impressive trick play practically taking a bow as he was getting that one in the club. We've seen that play in the outfield for Hosley. Now gets it here in the infield and four straight games now for Danny Do-It-All with a trick play. Cut and a miss from Jake Skoll on the Kellogg slider along with the two fastballs. We'll throw that breaker right there. A curve ball to boot as he steals a strike on the outside corner and a changeup to round out the arsenal. That one just barely tipped by Skoll. Another slider and the party animals right fielder able to spoil it. Yeah, and this is the plan of attack we've seen Ryan Kellogg have against Jake Skull just about all tour, just trying to throw him breaking balls. You don't want to give him the heater here, just try and keep it low and get him to be chasing those benders. 10 gift memberships tossed out by Greg Sharon. Heck of a start for the folks in the comments section. 
Happy Big Tiger Friday, am I right? Kellogg finally serves a heater up to school, and that one is going to burn D.R. Meadows. He takes a tumble, and the tour leader in extra base hits. Smells his third triple. He's got it. He separates himself from D.R. Meadows, the only other man who had more than one. And Skoll has his 14th extra base hit. Yeah, one of those defensive miscues from D.R. Meadows, a rare one at that. We've seen him play such a solid center field. And what you saw, a first step in instead of a first step out there from D.R., then had to start to backpedal and run to track that one down and never even touch D.R.'s glove, which is a big reason Jake Skoll able to get in at third base for the Animals. Dalton Cornett trying to wrap this thing fair. It is barely foul. Third base umpire Noah Katz had a great view of that easy call. 1-1 one, one count on the Party Animals cleanup man, the extra hitter tonight, as a former all-New York State center fielder. That is the toughest play to judge. When you're out there in center, a liner straight at you. Jake Skull hit it 102 miles an hour off the bat. This one jams Cornette. Alexiades had to run a long way and will put it away. Good job by Kellogg. He leaves Skoll at third base. And after the party animals claim the first five points available a night ago, no chance for them to notch one in the all-important points department in the first. The Bananas just need one run to jump out in front of themselves. And exactly what Ryan Kellogg and the Bananas needed as well. Three minutes and 59 seconds, the time of that first inning. This is how the Party Animals de defense looks. From left to right in the outfield, it is Thomas, Hampton, and Skoll. Third to first in the infield, you see Jordan Hussein, Chase Acuff, Dustin Baber, and Jason Swan. Behind the dish, it is Bronson Ballholm, and on the bump, Jake Lealios. Yeah, I mean, we saw Chase Acuff spend two days as the party animal's leader in trick plays, and now Dustin Baber has overtaken his teammate once again. Baber with a hat trick of trick plays last night, and Reese Hampton up to 11 trick plays, three behind DR Meadows for the outfield lead, and I'll tell you what, I know Reese Hampton is gunning for the record this season, and we've got a spotlight, Bronson Ballholm still doesn't have a trick play on the tour, but in each of his last two starts at catcher, he's thrown out Malachi Mitchell and Ryan Cox for the Bananas. Let's get a closer look at the pride of Tucson, Arizona. Jake Lealios making his first career start in banana ball here in his second world tour. It's his 30, 41st career banana ball game. He's getting his first career start. This season, he's striking out 20% of the batters that he's faced and has a 153 ERA plus as well for the animals. You got a quick peek at the banana starting lineup. D.R. Meadows at the top of it, 22nd time that the Nanners center fielder has hit leadoff across 23 games on the season. And Lealio's quickly ahead 0-2. A lot of fastballs, like you saw right there from Jake. You saw the 12-6 curve to steal a strike to begin his outing, and then he'll mix in a changeup and a few cutters as well. And again, this is something we were saying in the pregame show. Lealio's pounding the zone much better this season. And after getting ahead of D.R. Meadows 0-2, this one chopped over to the shortstop position. And Chase Acuff, who was errorless through the first 22 games of this year's tour, will not be able to get this one. I, I think that's an error on Acuff. I wrote single in my book, Josh. That took a brutal hop on the kid. In the hole, DR bearing down the line. I still have a zero on Chase Acuff's errors for the year. But that's just me. You are the statistical savant of banana ball. You can overrule me. I'll think about it. Okay, buddy. Before that play, with a scoring decision currently pending, Acuff, as Josh mentioned, zero errors, unbelievable stuff. That's compared to 29 trick plays in 33 attempts. But Leroy with his first game in the two hole this year, that one just a smidge high and a 2-0 count on the Nanners catcher. And also the first time for Bill Leroy that he's batted higher than seventh in the batting order this season on tour. And why not give him the bump up in the order considering he is second on the tour among qualified batters with a 395 batting average. Leading all hitters with his 489 OBP. That's not gonna go up here. Jake Skoll's got a beat on it in right. Pretends he doesn't see it, hoping to deke DR. The ploy does not work. But it's a big first out for Lealios with the inning winning run, staying put at first. Roy hands the baton, 
to his teammate across the last, last six years in Banana Land. And the man Oberst. DR off for second, that one in the dirt, perfect pitch to run on. Ball home, able to corral it, but not before Meadows has his seventh stolen base in nine attempts. And the Bananas know that Dan Oberst has been excellent batting with runners in scoring position this season. A 346 mark, a big reason they wanted DR Meadows off and running and getting into scoring position. There it is, a Dan Oberst single into right field, but Tyler Gillum will pump the brakes on DR. Meanwhile, it's Oberst with an aggressive play, moving up to second base thanks to that throw home from Jake Skull. Skull doesn't hit the cut, sails it over Swan's head. Oberst as good a base runner as you're illegally allowed to be in the Peach State. After he spent the final three years of his college career at the University of West Georgia. In his swan song there, he was the 2021 Gulf South Conference Player of the Year. 12-6 curve, a pinch up to Michael Vitamin D. The extra hitter making a home for himself in the cleanup spot. Has the fate of the inning in his hands. Same pitch, same result. 2-0 on Deeb, eight walk-offs on the year. Third most on the tour. And he goes chasing, left the strike zone on a heater that looked like it was coming in at the same plane as those curves. And that's a pitch that can get really anybody to chase. You always see the heater up around the eyes. You want to get that ball. As Deeb will drive this one out to left center field. Reese Hampton won't even challenge. A throw home here, it'll be a walk-off sacrifice fly for the Bananas here in the first. Well, after losing each of the first five innings last night, the Animals win the first this evening, and they're up by a point just like that. And Bananas visited Elena Rushing at Memorial Hospital as she battled bone cancer. Later that night, Elena came to the ballpark and came out in her wheelchair to celebrate the Bananas scoring their first run of the night. Tonight, we are so happy to have Elena back with us here at Grayson Stadium to take She's taking her first steps without a walker to celebrate the Bananas inning winning run. And fans, one more thing. It's even better than that. We are so happy to announce that as of March 16th, Elena is 100% cancer free. I'd be gobsmacked if there's a dry eye here in historic Grayson Stadium. How about Elena? That's the choreography on her patented dance. The Bananas and Party Animals first learned when they visited her at the hospital. She has kicked the absolute tookus off of cancer. It takes her first steps without a walker all the way to home plate as the Nanners jump out in front. A really powerful moment indeed, and she said that she wanted her first steps to be here in Grayson Stadium with the Bananas, who she has supported so much, and really cool to see Michael Deeb leading her down to home plate, considering the cleats that he's wearing tonight. You see blue and yellow on the shoes from Michael Deeb. Elena painted those cleats specifically for Deeb to wear in tonight's contest. Smiles from ear to ear for Elena and Deeb. That is what Banana Ball is all about. You know what Banana Ball also is all about? Miking up our guys, Ryan Cox and Jackson Olsen. We've got some Jenga on the field for the first time in Banana Ball history. First time. Let's go, first time. First time, yeah, you? Yeah, you? <laughs> I'm gonna start. <laughs> now, right, now, Ryan's going first. No, who? none off the top three, right? All right, all right, all right, here we go. That feels fair you to me. What? I'm gonna wait till the pitch goes by because <laughs> who, who do the Vegas odds favor in this contest? Um, 
I think Ryan has a steadier hand. Also here. Oh, DR almost knocked over the Jenga set. Careful, DR. He jumps over Kellogg. Ah, strike. And he... Wait, now. Oh, what's going on? Now what happens? Kellogg's going out to center. Meadows is going to finish the plate appearance. No. Scratch that. Reverse it. Kellogg jumps Meadows and flips it. Look out. That was terrifying. One, one count. DR will retreat back to center. Ready for this, boys? I'm yes. Ready. Here we go. Uh-oh. Jackson Olsen, oh. you could be an open heart surgeon. <laughs> well, pitch we came in, out. did not think he was going to throw it that fast. Here we go. I can't believe he got one in here. That Swing and a, I don't even know if A Cup touched that. I just lost my mic. Oh no, I just lost my mic. Wow! Okay. Cox's mic is swinging around. He's trying oh, to get no, back what to happened? short. Alright, I'm running over after this next pitch. I've been so anxious to go over there. I don't know why. <laughs> Just, just be careful in case of possible sprint defense, guys. True. Ah, there we go. All right, here we go. I'm meticulously going to do this right now. Back foot slider. Okay, Jackson, this is officially your first pull? Second, yeah. Second. second pull, second pull. Okay. Got it. Well, I'd like a camera there on second base every game. Oh, is he going to get it in time? Is he going to get it in time? Oh, it's oh my it's shaking, gosh! It's shaking, it's shaking, it's shaking. So careful! I'm so nervous. <laughs> okay, he retreats. Tanner Thomas, wow, tough hop for Hosley. He hangs with it. Yay. He's playing a heck of a third base. Yeah, he is. You know what, I'm just going to go for another one. A third impressive play for Danny Hosley in tonight's game. That ball had a little bit of spin on it, and Hosley waiting patiently for that one and another good throw over to EJ at yeah. first. Well, the more, impre uh, more impressive play was me just taking out that <laughs> bottom Jenga piece, so I don't know why we're not talking about that. You know, we really do have to stay on topic. We're not used to having a Jenga game right literally in the middle. Oh, Coxley! Ryan, make a play right now. Woo! Got him, got him. Thank got you, EJ. Good work by EJ Good on the tag. Good job. That's you. Good job. We've got a tie on the Jenga game. How's this going to unfold? What are we going to do? You guys. Are we bringing it in? Who's due up here? Are you just going to leave it? No, I'm bringing it in. Okay. Make sure you knock it over. No, I'm going to. Oh! oh! <laughs> does that, does that right. make Ryan Cox the winner? I guess it does. I guess it does. Wow, the ASMR. All right, boys. The Jenga well, blocks being gathered if, awesome. if you find any blocks in the field later, I'm sorry. We love you both. Thank you so much. See ya. Oh, there go the blocks. <laughs> Cox and Olsen run off the field with Jenga blocks in their hands. Ryan, Jackie and Ryan, do we still have you guys? You want to participate in this sing-off with us, actually, real quick? Sure. Okay, sweet. I don't know what Jake's song is. We'll start right now. I realized I'd be really remiss if we missed this opportunity to hear your gorgeous singing voices. All right, here we go. Yeah, now it's time to shine. And baby, you shook me all night long. Yeah, you <laughs> shook me all. Oh, I guess. All right. Well, good work on the guitar solo there, Jackie. A little guitar solo improv, you know. Got to do it. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. See <laughs> we you guys. appreciate it. <laughs> there goes Jackson Olson and Ryan Cox. The dynamite bananas middle infielders. Both hands steady as could be so the game kind of ends in a tie ryan cox wins on a technicality as jackie tried to adjust it at the end and it toppled i think we need a we need a sequel i would like a sequel a two minute and two second inning does not do you any favors when you're trying to play some jenga no but ryan kellogg is thrilled about it party animals go to their bullpen here in the second inning and that is a rude greeting for zach blankenship from danny hosley Danny do it all turning into Danny doubles. That is his fourth two bagger of the tour and he's racking them up here at home. Yeah, Hosley's been terrific, especially since calendar month turned to April. He's got three ABs and three hits, two of them doubles. There it is. Now Eric Jones Jr. will swing it with the inning winning run in scoring position. Lincolnship has had three excellent outings in a row. That's a beautiful 
backdoor bender to jump out in front of the former Mariners and Twins minor leaguer who flies out to the former Rangers and Yankees minor leaguer. Hosley will tag up to third easily. Good piece of hitting there from EJ, 95 miles an hour off his bat, according to Trackman. And he pushes the inning winning run to 90 feet away for the 2023 Pioneer League MVP, Reese Alexiades. And turned Skull around just a little bit in right field as well, which was key to Danny Hosley being able to tag up and get to third base as well on that fly out. Party Animals have to bring the infield in. So Blankenship went with the splitter there. This one chopped to Acuff. Hosley has to dart back to the bag. Good work by Chase. Looking the Nanners third baseman back to third. That's a huge second out for Blankenship. That was a really smart play by Chase Aka. Checked and started to run Danny Hosley back to third. Wasn't worried about trying to get that lead runner out. Instead, he's not going to be leaving in that situation. Get it over to first base and get that second out. Specialty walk up here from Robert Anthony Cruz. Rack clearly channeling his inner Miley Cyrus. Bananas left fielder out of the eight hole, the former Washington Nationals minor leaguer. And one of our social media superstars proving that you can get the best of both worlds. Still killing it on the socials. Over a million followers and subscribers across the talk, the gram, and the tube. And look at that guy rocking it. It's got a clear the wig out of his eyes. And now we'll swing it with the inning hanging in the balance. And now the Bananas hoping Rack can get the best of both worlds at the plate after bodying the walk up. Can he get the walk off for the Bananas? And what would only be his second hit, believe it or not, here in Grayson Stadium, both of those would also be walk-offs. Lincolnship wins the battle. Thomas battling the sun. Comes away with the fly out. And it is still one point to nothing with the Bananas ahead. With two innings in the books, we'll send it down to Maceo Harrison with Bananas and Animals alike ready to dance us to the third. How about Maceo Harrison with Lealios, Ponce, Helton, and DeClue for the party animals? Deerman, Mitchell, Nisnik, and Ziegler from the Nanners. It's going to be the bottom three for the bad boys in Banana Land here to kick off inning number three. Ball home, Baber, and Swan, and we get a hockey pitch from Kellogg. Between the legs goes Ryan Cox. One pitch, one out to kick off the top of the third as the Glove Magician extends his trick play lead up to 47. The perfect sequence of events right now, right there if you're the Bananas. Ryan Kellogg, a perfectly executed hockey pitch over the middle of the plate, and it goes right to the Glove Magician, who just shows his natural trick play instincts, goes in between the legs, and extends his tour lead. The man in second place, Dustin Baber, now trailing by 13. Baber is 34 for 41 in his trick play tries. And we'll have to wait for Kellogg with his backup dancers of Olsen, Cox, and Meadows as it's 3-2-2 time. 
Riz oozing from the six foot six southpaw as Baber blasts this one deep out to center field and Alexiades ranging over from right makes a super play. Well, we know that he can play all three outfield positions for the Bananas and positioned himself right for the 3-2-2 defense, Manning right center there. That's the gap Baber was going for, and Alexiades uses his above average speed to cover that gap and make a phenomenal sliding play to rob Baber of what was sure to be an extra base hit. Babe's three for four last night brought his batting average from 217 up to 247, a 30 point increase. He hit that one 97 miles an hour off the bat, according to Trackman. So he's swinging the lumber very well. Quality at bat. Won't show up in the scorebook. And now a one-two count on Jason Swan, who's pacing the party animals and batting average still out of the bottom spot in the order, hitting a team high 355 with a 402 on base percentage. What more could you ask for from your 10-hole hitter? He's got nine hits in his last six games for the party animals, but only 15% of Swanee's hits have gone for extra bases, and I think that's a big reason you're batting him in the 10 hole. Not necessarily always hitting for power, but gosh darn it if he doesn't get on base like he did there against Ryan Kellogg. EJ not able to get the banana ball and glove there. Yeah, that'll be a base knock for Swanee. Burning speed, EJ had to get dirty to try and make the play. It trickles away from him, and to the top of the order we go. Fouled straight back from Reese Hampton, who started the ball game out with a hot shot to Hosley at third. He was robbed of extra bases on a fine play by Danny Duidall. What a job Ryan Kellogg is doing early on in this game. This is a Party Animals team that scored 15 runs on 19 hits last night. And we thought it might be history. It turns out that wasn't even the case for the Animals. As again, last April 26th here in Grayson Stadium, that team scored 19 runs on 21 hits against the Bananas. Bouncer backhanded by Cox. He goes the short way. Olsen there to nab Swan on the force. And Kellogg, ha Kellogg has tossed three scoreless. He looks masterful in the Bananas defense, flashing the leather all over the place. A second straight sub, three minute inning for Ryan Kellogg and he has already induced five ground outs in this ball game, and we've seen the Bananas pitchers have a lot of success when the party animals are getting these balls on the ground. We have a brand new promotion. Let's get it down to a resident rodeo clown, Matt Wolf. If you're not familiar with button busting, it's my favorite event in the rodeo. It's where we have some kids jump on the backs of sheep and hold on for dear life to be the toughest cowboy on dirt we have four cowboys with us tonight which is Walt and let's meet the sheep <laughs> some nice looking sheep all right sheep here's the deal one at a time we're going to go around the barrel as fast as we can and back. The rider who stays on the longest or gets back the quickest will be the winner. All at once. Here we go. Three, two, one. Let's ride. Oh, we got a collision. And the winner is right here. Let's give it up for him. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Spencer's the winner. Now that Congratulations to Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan Rodriguez dialed in as per usual. He was done with his warm up pitches nearly a minute ago and has just been sitting there staring at ball home 60 feet and six inches away from him like the psychopath he is. Yeah, and Ryan Rodriguez, again, most of the results this season for the party animals have been tremendous for him. It's all about finding the zone, but his last outing was the quickest one of his young banana ball career. Two minutes and 17 seconds, and you can always see the intensity in the eyes of Ryan Rodriguez when he is out there on the mound. He's in for the bottom two in the bananas lineup, trying to feed the top. Bananas just need one run 
here in the bottom of the third to notch their second point of the ball game. Jackson Olsen gets four straight bad ones from Sexy Mexi. Rodriguez out of Newhall, California. The kid, the New Milford, Connecticut now aboard. And it looks like Jackie gonna run for himself. Interesting, Malachi Mitchell flashed the kid. The Bananas designated runner has not been used. He can be used once every time through the order and we're in the 10 hole here, so. He's not used for Olsen. The Bananas have gone once through the order without putting the fastest man in banana ball on the bases. Here's the first strike after five bad ones from Rodriguez. 12-6 curveball in there. He'll work in a slider and cutter as well. Yeah, it didn't feel like Ryan Cox was going to try to take the bat off his shoulder until Ryan Rodriguez got one over the plate. Here, this one misses just a hair low to Coxie. And once again, this is kind of the one bugaboo for Ryan Rodriguez on the season, falling behind in counts and just not always having his best location. Meanwhile, Jason Swan gets this one on a hop, takes it to the first base bag, fires to A cup, covering at second base, and that is a terrific 3-6 double play from the Party Animals first baseman. Textbook from the five-year man out of Georgia Southern. Cox uh, barely got out of the box before he was forced out at first. Olsen a dead duck at second. And just like that, what looked like a sticky inning for Ryan Rodriguez is an absolutely delightfully quick one. And it's his new fastest inning of all time in his banana ball career. Two minutes and 11 seconds for the sexy maxi. Still just a one point lead for the Nanners. Three innings in the books. It's Banana Nanas O'Clock. The Banana Nanas rock the top off of Historic Grayson Stadium, as they always do. And they give way to the second year banana baller, third year banana, Jared Donaldson. Yeah, his last outing was his best one of the season. Donnie set the party animal six up, six down, and did it with two strikeouts. Both of his innings were thrown in under three minutes. And the interesting note about Jared Donaldson, we talk about this splitter and keeping the ball on the ground. Jared Donaldson is a 4.61 ERA in appearances when he induces more or as many ground outs as he does fly outs. When it's the opposite, he has an ERA of almost 12 against the party animals. Donnie had the eye of the tiger his last time out, similar to Ryan Rodriguez when the kid out of Albany, Georgia, gets in his groove. He looks as fierce as anyone we've ever seen play our young sport, he's one pitch into his outing and has to take a knee because Vincent Chapman called time, dusted off home plate, albeit not tremendously. There's still a good amount of dirt on the dish, but that's not the point. He was just doing it to dance. As the Terminator in the chat asking if this is live, of course it's live. That's the only way we broadcast Banana Ball, buddy. Trackman stats on that performance from our home plate umpire, Josh. That was an 82 mile an hour mass keep, so not as fast as last night. Of course, this data courtesy of Trackman, right. but uh, you know that's still faster than a Sean Fluke fastball. <laughs> it took me a second to get to that when I was distracted by Grayson Bloomer bludgeoning himself with a foul ball. He always gets dirty before the game even starts. He takes a couple tumbles averaging two, although he'll he'll hit the ground three or four times during the home run hitter during the pregame entertainment. Tonight we had, and this is really saying something because the home run hitters 
here in my fifth year of broadcasting Banana Ball have been off the rails more than ever before. DR Meadows grabs that ball well struck by Bloomer for out number one. But our home run hitter today was as absurd as any I've ever seen. Malachi Mitchell had to take control of the situation. Over the last two or three weeks, the home run hitters have been wiling out, as the kids say. They do say that. <laughs> well, 92 miles an hour off the bat of Bloomer. Nothing to show for it. Now Jake Skull will step in. It is a beefy part of the order for the bad boys of Banana Land. Two, three, and four. Skull is scorching hot. A double his first time. Check that, a triple, and he ended up stranded at third base. And thanks to his triple in the first, he has already extended what is now 28 consecutive games, reaching base for the party animals. He is two away from tying Reese Hampton's banana ball record, 30 consecutive games getting on base safely. He's cutting away 3-0, comes up empty. That's a four-seam fastball from Jared Donaldson. It will be astonishing for folks out there because the movement on it is two-seam-esque. It's gnarly, but he can't throw a two-seam because that thing has far more movement than the four seam. He can't control it. Jake Skull just sneaks into second. On the sprint there, all seven bananas behind the pitcher and catcher have to touch the ball before it's live. And nobody is better at getting two bags in sprints than the man in his fourth world tour second for the party animals. How about Dalton Cornett galloping up to the dish in a horse costume? with what I can only imagine is Garrett DeClue got the rear end of the deal here. These guys are horsing around in the fourth. <laughs> I say DeClue because he was last night's opener and is the smallest man on the Party Animals roster. And yeah, okay, I was right. There he goes, he scampers away. Takes the horse head with him. And Cornette dinks this one up the middle, diving catch by Ryan Cox. The Glove Magician does it again. A highlight worthy play from Ryan Cox, ranging into the outfield grass right behind second base and laying out to make a phenomenal catch to keep Jake Skull from possibly scoring what would have been a little blooper. 1 0 count on Chase Acuff, the animal shortstop, in his eighth straight game in the five hole after he was the number seven hitter for the party animals. Across the majority of the first 15 games on this tour. Donnie with three straight bad ones. Another ball will score Skull easily from second. And not even, not anywhere close. Skull will score easily. Party animals push their first run across of the evening on two sprints here in the top of the fourth. And the fellas in black and pink finally giving their pitching staff an opportunity to earn a point as they will party rock around home plate. Makeup with his 17th run batted in. He is having an unbelievable sophomore banana ball campaign. And this is where we've seen uh, some of the woes for Jared Donaldson across this year's world tour. Of course, the splitter guys a little behind the curve when it comes to throwing this banana ball. Have to, have to learn how to find the zone a little more effectively. It's, it's a difficult pitch to command for sure, and that's the reason why, at times, Jared Donaldson really struggles with the ball force sprint out there on the mound. <laughs> as Dio Meadows! Court wheels flips. I don't even know what that was, but that's a trick play for the doctor. His 15th on this year's world tour. You simply know it when you see it. Get another gander at this. A new trick in the bag of DR Meadows who lands on his keister. That's a cannonball twirl. And he's a perfect 15 for 15. He leads all outfielders in that department. It's like jumping into a swimming pool for DR Meadows. Yes. Great description, except for a soft landing into water. He bounces off the Grayson Stadium grass. Bold move. And it pays off. Nobody does it like the doctor. This guy is 
a treat to watch each and every night that we have the honor of feasting our peepers on his banana ball nonsense. Hey baby time here in historic Grayson Stadium. This game is flying at an astronomical pace. We're about 37 minutes in, 38 and change we'll call it. And we're in the middle of the fourth. The bananas lead by one point. The party animals lead the inning by one run. As you get a gander at the Vidalia, Georgia native, Hey Babying, and pass it on over to the fans, some of our youngest Hey Babiers in attendance. This is the 310th straight sold out Bananas or Party Animals show, 228 of them here at Grayson Stadium. Good to see. Bananas insider, now K Club legend Tate Puke getting after it out behind the left field wall. As we look at Garrett Delano, who will be tasked with handling the lion's share of the pitching load for the party animals tonight. Yeah, Garrett Delano is leading this year's world tour with a 2.15 ERA plus. He's been over two times better than the tour average pitcher. And last year for Garrett Delano, he was moved to the bullpen mid-season because he wanted to pitch in higher leverage innings and collect some wins. Now that didn't exactly work out for him, but now this new opener strategy the party animals have employed allows him to once again get that same opportunity as he tries to replicate what Brett Helton accomplished last night for the animals. When Josh says it didn't really work out for him is we've got a 2-0 count on Bill Leroy, just like it was for the party animals in the top half. The Bananas have two, three, and four here in the bottom of the fourth. Hot shot under the sliding attempt of Jordan Hussein. Leroy takes an awkward round of first. And now he's going to get up to second on the third error of the year from Tanner Tinder Thomas in the outfield. He had zero last year across 69 games played. Very uncharacteristic defensive miscues from the third year party animal. Yeah, and he spent most of last season manning right field for the party animals. Has played more, has spent more time in left this season, but just one of those plays that really surprising he wasn't able to really collect that ball and get it in quickly. And now Bill Leroy has been pinch ran for by Malachi Mitchell Bananas, just aiming to tie this inning up and make sure they can keep a one point lead through four. There's the fastest man in banana ball. Quick 0-2 count on Oberst who singled sharply through the right side his first time. To finish up our point on Delano, across 21 outings, 14 of them starts last year, he never got a win. As one of the better pitchers on the tour, that's just the roller coaster ride of banana ball. There's so many ties and changes in leads that across all 14 of his starts, even when he left with the lead so often, his bullpen coughed it up, even if they ended up winning the game afterwards. And of course, kind of moved into a closer's role in June and July for the party animals. And even that stint wasn't necessarily Delano at his most effective. It was a time when he was more than anything struggling with control and he'll miss the strike zone entirely here. A wild pitch with Malachi Mitchell up to third for the Bananas. Yeah, speak of the devil. I think uncatchable by Bronson Ballholm. So the inning tying run 90 feet away, no outs. The party animals will play the infield back. They'll give up the run to grab a first out. Now they're just trying to escape the fourth inning down by one point. Although Delano still perfectly capable of pulling a Houdini and escaping this frame unscathed. He's got elite stuff. You saw a sharp curve ball there. It dances out of the zone. Good take by his jiu-jitsu partner, Dan Oberst, who has worked the count from 0-2 to 3-2. Payoff pitch, front door bender, and Delano rings the bell. Oberst, caught looking. And you're gonna get the patented crab celebration from Garrett Delano after the strikeout looking of Oberst. <laughs> and that's a rare one. And Dan Oberst, a guy who loves to hack at the plate, rarely do you see him taking, especially in a 3-2 count. And now, get a look at Michael Deeb in the batter's box and those cleats that were painted by Elena prior to this game. 
masterful artistry from Elena, who was the chief orchestrator of the Bananas walk-off celebration after Deeb won the first on a sack fly. And how about Delano? What a gutsy move. He looks up to the booth. You bet your bottom dollar, Garrett. You continue to lead all pitchers in trick plays. Well, you saw the confidence from Garrett Delano as he was coming up the mound. He told Jordan Hussein and Bronson Ballholm, I want this ball, and didn't want to catch it the typical way. Comes down with a bare hand snag, and look, this guy was a two-way player in college at Brown and Mercer. Shows it here. Fourth trick play in as many tries. And he's one out away from escaping what seemed to be destined to be a tied inning. Acuff, nice play to take care of Hosley. Delano, how did you do it? Malachi Mitchell was at third base with nobody out. Strikeout, pop-up, ground out, and the party animals claim their first point of the night. It is one-to-one. -one. We've got to get it down to the field. Here's Jolie Chabala. States, there are over 400,000 children and teens in foster care without a permanent home. To raise awareness and bring families together, we created a nonprofit called Bananas Foster. This organization is dedicated to celebrating those making a difference in the foster care community while educating and inspiring others to get involved. Tonight, we have the honor of celebrating Kelly Middleton. Kelly has been a single foster mom here in Georgia for the last 16 years. In total, she has welcomed over 100 children and teens into her home. Fans, please help us celebrate Kelly for the amazing things that she's doing to make a difference in the foster care community. a special night in Banana Land. Big group hug around Kelly Middleton, who's one of the most incredible superheroes we've ever had the honor of honoring. Single foster mom for over 16 years and has welcomed, oh, just 100 children into her home. Staggering stuff. Just really speaks to the kind of person that she is and the heart that she has for all of these foster children, for sure. Fire us up, Kelly. Are you kidding me? One more group hug. And a pose for a picture. We're back to the banana ball. Four innings in the books. It's been a thrilling ball game. We are tied at one point each. The historic race and stadium scoreboard is wrong currently in the fourth inning. I don't know who to tell that. I'm just sending it out into the ether. It says the Bananas have a run scored in the fourth inning. They didn't do that, but the points are correct. So overall, I'm just confounded by what's happening. What is not a surprise at all and provides no confusion to us in the booth is Jordan Hussein, a young banana ball career and he is now four for 12, hitting a cool 333 overall, four singles. And all four of those hits have come in his three starts on tour this season. So when he's in that starting lineup, you can feel pretty confident that Jordan Hussein's going to get on with a single and hopefully soon driving the ball for some extra base hits as well as ball home. Goes aggressive, first pitch swinging once again, this time against Jared Donaldson. And Risa Lexiotis, perfect jump there in right field to come up with the catch. Donnie out for his second inning of work. Gave up one run on two sprints in the fourth inning. So Hussein singled the first hit off of the 2022 Peach Belt Conference Pitcher of the Year tonight. He gets Baber swinging out of his shoes at a pitch, a smidge above the zone. 
Donaldson right around 90 to 92 miles an hour with his fastball. Trackman's had most of his heaters at 90 and 91 tonight. That one at 90 on the dot. One two count on Baber who lined out to right 97 miles an hour off the bat. He's swinging a hot stick right now. Had three hits last night for the party and was his first three hit game of the tour. And right now riding a 10 game on base streak as well. Hussein deked on the steal and they were able to foul off another 90 mile an hour fastball. And that 10 game on base streak, not the only streak for Baber, he's actually starting his 96th consecutive game at second base for the party animals. He's truly the iron horse of this squad. Yeah, that's the current lead in banana ball for consecutive starts at one position. He'll be pursuing 100 in a row. 100 in a row next Sunday in Durham, North Carolina. We'll have one more game here in Savannah tomorrow night and then three in Durham Bulls Athletic Park. One of the coolest stadiums in not just the country but the world. That place simply rocks. Payoff pitch. That one sliced right to where Jackson Olsen was. Hussein off on the pitch. Moves the banana's second baseman perfectly out of the spot. And Hussein hustling into third easily. Yeah, Jordan Hussein deciding to take off on a 3-2 pitch. Not necessarily a hit and run per se, but it works out as Jackson Olsen left to cover that second base bag. And as soon as he was gunning over to cover the bag, it was hit exactly where he had been positioned and now the party animals with runners on the corners and a chance to tag Jared Donaldson for more runs this time in the fifth inning. Another well struck ball there by Papa Babe. 93 off the bat is Donnie ahead 0-2 on Swan. He didn't wholeheartedly co-sign that strike call from Vincent Chapman behind the dish. And as Donnie overthrows that one, that's a job by Bill Leroy to get to it. Hussein runs like the wind. Can score easily from third on a wild pitch or pass ball. That's gonna get the run in. Cox to second. Swan runs very well, so Olsen never had a chance in the world for the double play. And the party animals, after being held scoreless across three frames by Ryan Kellogg, have notched a run in two straight against Donnie, and let's get it down to the field. Thank you. See Mike Rack, Savannah Times. Rumor has it the Savannah Bananas are way better than the party animals. How do you respond? Uh, no real response here. Uh, boys are just better. And that's the whole celebration. It's a smattering of booze from the full capacity. Mostly Bananas faithful crowd here in Savannah. Good work by Party Animals correspondent Drake Toldo. I think he shined in that run celebration. The top of the order we go. Leroy and Chapman seemingly having a riveting conversation with some fans behind the dish. Hampton after bouncing out twice from the right side against Kellogg, turns over to the left side and has to jackknife out of the way of that heater. He says struck the ball well both times. He yanked them both to the left side. Hosley and Cox each took their turn robbing the animal center fielder of a base knock. Won't be too upset though. He's hitting 323 in his third banana ball world tour, pacing the team with a 422 on base percentage. And as the count runs full. And for as good as DR Meadows has been on this year's world tour, it was actually Reese Lightning who became the first man on tour this year to get to the 30 hit plateau. That ball rocketed a mile foul. We'll do another 3 2. Swan has to. Head back to first base. He'll be off on the pitch, of course. 3-2 with two down. 
Yeah, and if you're Jared Donaldson, you want to get beat with Reese Hampton's bat and not allow the ball for a sprint there. Swan got a decent jump, but I don't think it looks like Mike Vivasis is going to try and give him the wave to come around and score a second run in the inning. And indeed, it'll be, it'll be Swanee stopped at third. Well, we hope Jason Swan's okay. It looks like he yanked his right hamstring. I did see it happen when he was burning it down the line to collect the ribeye on the fielder's choice. He came up lame and was going about 50% from first to third after beating it like a tiger. A cheetah would be the better big cat to compare him to, flying down that first baseline. One one count now on Bloomer who has lined out and popped out both to third. How fast are Pumas? Pretty quick, but not as fast as cheetahs, Josh. Links. Links, they're quick, but once again, Cheetah's the fastest. Cat is Donnie. Takes control of that situation. Only man who could have made the play, he does. But one run on two hits for the animals. They strand a couple guys on base and look to take their first lead in the all important points department in this ballgame. We'll have to keep the bananas completely off the board in the bottom of the fifth if they'd like that to happen as the banana band blasts away below us and we will pop up into the broadcast booth it is fan mail o'clock this one coming from lindsey lewis here is our letter great penmanship dear biko and josh i've never missed a game and live made you guys bracelets i've made you guys bracelets i, I complimented Lindsay's penmanship and then butchered the first line. Uh, here's a bracelet. Josh, you already grabbed yours. I have been wearing mine for a couple of weeks now. You pilfered this thing well ahead of schedule. Okay, that's awesome. Thank I, you, Lindsay. I did. Yeah, good work by you. Uh, going to a bananas game is on my bucket list, and I hope one day I get to go to one. I've also been keeping score of every game on my phone. You're a rock star. That's awesome. You guys are my favorite broadcasters. Once again, two straight nights, I, I promise you, we're not making this up. That absolutely <laughs> rocks. Uh, and my favorite entertainer is Maceo. Everyone loves Maceo. Come on. That guy rocks. Uh, Jackson Olsen will forever be my favorite player. Here's some bracelets that I've made for you guys. A big go bananas. Sincerely, Lindsay Lewis. Uh, thank you so much for the sweet gear, Lindsay. And for an incredible streak. The iron horse of BTV viewership. These things rock. Double up my bracelet count. I continue to forget a plethora of mine in my bedroom at home. But the ones I get in person, son of a gun if I won't slap them on. Bottom of the fifth, six, seven, eight for the Nanners. That ball stroked into left field. And EJ gonna test the arm of Reese Hampton. Bad decision. A strike from the former Tigers and Diamondbacks minor leaguer. And it's just going to be a single for Jones Jr. as the party animals start the inning with an out. Another look at the perfect one hopper. Nice swim slide there from Jones Jr. But Chris, Chris Walker right on top of it with the out call. EJ's been excellent in the extra base hit department for the Bananas this season and decided he would get a little aggressive. But Reese Hampton was really set up in a prime position to offer a strong throw there, there to second base and nail Eric Jones Jr. and keep the Bananas from reaching on the base pass to start this bottom of the fifth. Now Reese Alexiades, who grounded out to short his first time. Here, Ballholm will take care of it. Good play by Swanee. Leaving the bag and coming back down on top of it. As you get another look at the strikeout. Ballholm thought he caught it, but just to make sure, fires it down to first with a heads up play by, I mean, it was on the Ogden Raptors in the Pioneer League across the last three years. Here's another Pioneer League veteran, Brandon Crosby, hitting in the spot of Robert Anthony Cruz. He's taken over for Rack in left field and has a 1-1 count on him. Crosby out of Mechanicsville, Virginia. Checks his swing, fouls it off. 
gnarly two seam there from Delano to jump ahead in the count. Crosby spent the last two summers in the Pioneer League. 2022 with the Northern Colorado Owls. Great take by him there on a nasty curve. And last year with time across the Ogden Raptors in spring training with Alexiades, then a little cup of tea with the Owls again and spent the majority of the year with the Rocky Mountain vibes as he comes up empty. Delano is dealing two scoreless innings and two points earned as the party animals claim their first lead of the night. We're now up two to one. And two minutes and 46 seconds, the MPI mark there for Garrett Delano. And again, this opener situation starting to play out even better for the party animals as the offense starting to back the guys in these middle innings. As we head to the top of the sixth, we've got a mic on the Bananas backstop. The man with the mask, Mr. Bill Leroy, how's your evening going? It's going absolutely phenomenal, Biko. Can you guys hear me up there? We've got you loud you and clear. You sound beautiful, Bill. Oh, man, what a beautiful day for some banana ball in Savannah, Georgia. You kidding me? Hey, how about before we let you take over on the play-by-play -play for the inning is you're one of the best in the biz in that department, and I'm, I'm fired up to take a little break. How about the elevation up into the two-hole tonight, buddy? Oh, my goodness. I heard the news this morning, and I woke up, and I got a cup of coffee, and I hit the ground running <laughs> because I was fired. Watch this trick play, Biko. Ow! I almost caught it. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome, man. Oh! That's the best my arm has felt in two weeks. Okay, Bill, you are our play-by-play -play man for the top of the sixth inning. I'm so excited for this. Vico, Josh, you guys are phenomenal at your jobs, but I'm coming for it right now. Here we go, leading off the inning, Jake Skull, also wearing number one. But in a my bias and unbiased opinion, I'm the better number one. Wind's blowing out to left field. Jared, Jared Donaldson in his third inning of work. Lead off the inning. See what he throws here. A fastball, and I'm going to... Oh, that's going to be <laughs> hanging up in the air. Does the fan make a play? They do not. No gloves over there on the left side by the tables. And as, as Skull hops back in the box, we've got an absolute banger playing. The count's 0-1. <laughs> He's ahead in the count. Let's see what he throws here. Oh my gosh, a disgusting splitter just below the zone. Skull's chirping at me. Yeah. <laughs> Shake off and go inside. And there's oh. another strike and a beautiful pitch. Great pitch call. And it's got him up in the count one and two here. Let's see what happens. What does he throw here? Oh, and a high, high slider. <laughs> Bold surprising. move. Bold move, Cotton. Uh, count goes to two and two. Doesn't want that pitch. Here comes the delivery. Oh! Fouled straight back. That's what happens when you shake the catcher off. <laughs> and about 95% of the time that these pitchers shake me off, we give up some sort of big barrel. Let's see. So we're going to go with a. Oh, it looks like he's shaking again. He doesn't want that pitch, but he wants this one. Let's see what happens here. Oh, and there's a high chopper to second base. Jackson retreats, throws the first, and a great play for the first out of the inning. You know, that first out, I'm so sorry. I just did the most stupid thing. <laughs> you threw that to your dugout. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm trying to triple, I'm trying to multitask here, and I just launched Jake Skull's badge in the wrong dugout. And we're going to hit Don Cornette in the ribs with this pitch. <laughs> Let us try All right, inside. He said it was inside. All right. Count goes to one and zero. And the wind up and the pitch. Oh my God! Please be foul. If it's fair, if it's gone, it's fair. <laughs> All right. The count goes to one and one. Let's not throw that one again. Wind up in the pitch. One one. Oh, and a beautiful pitch on the inner half right there. Wow, what a pitch. Got it. No shake off there. Let's see what happens. Oh, wow. I got it. I'll go get it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Somebody else. All right. There we go. <laughs> that would have been a long run for you, Bill. I think the coaches are trying to tell me something. I feel like in Finding Nemo, when Crush is like, I know you're trying to tell me something, squirt. <laughs> but I have no idea 
what he said. Here we go. Wind up in the pitch. Strike oh. one. I'm sure That's it wasn't a... important, whatever they were trying to tell you. Oh, I think it was some kind of sequence, but it looks like a... Oh, wind up in the pitch. A stutter. Oh. Oh, and miss, I might have missed that one, but that's all right. <laughs> oh, and he goes, he's going fast. Oh, and a foul ball, one, two count. He's moving so fast, I can't even think. What are we going to throw here? I know we're going to throw here. Oh, he doesn't want it. He doesn't want that. He doesn't want that. What does he want? He's got only three pitches, and he's going to his, oh, and there's a ground ball to the left side. Gabe Howell attempts a trip play. <laughs> But I don't think that's a trick play. That's going to be out for Chase Acuff at first base. And that's going to wrap up the bottom of the fifth inning, the top of the fifth inning, the top of the sixth inning. Whatever inning we're in, I can't keep up with this. I can do this all day. Hey, Noah Bridges, anything you want to say to the people at home? You talking to yourself right now? Yeah, I don't have, I'm, I'm, you want to, do you want to say anything? What's up, brother? What's up, brother? Tuesday, Tuesday, special players. What's up, Mom? It was a phenomenal job. Thank you, Biko. Thank you, Josh for allowing me to do this with you in the next game. I love you. Billy, be out. Love you too, Bill Leroy. He's the best in the business. That was three minutes and 23 seconds of play-by-play -play perfection. Let's get it down to Princess Potassia. It's the first ever princess race. She's got the mic. more princess races. You know, I wore one of those dresses back in the day, Josh. Uh, interviewing our previous play-by-play -play man, Bill Leroy, no? Little roles reversed, you nailed it. You looked <laughs> stunning. <laughs> oh, talk about <laughs> embarrassing. Jackson Olsen, not many things that guy can be embarrassed about in life. Uh, he's, he's pretty much on top of the world in every single aspect. But when you swing and miss at a breaking ball that then hits you in the foot, that's one thing that you can feel a pinch of shame for. But he's not the only man who's done that. Chase Acuff on the Party Animals did that on a gnarly Ryan Kellogg slider down and in, taking a back foot slider very literally. And look at that. Jackie gets the last laugh. He worked a sprint his first time. Now he's one for one. Base for the second time tonight. Great piece of two strike hitting from Jackson Olsen. Despite Biko Scala trying to distract me from the fact that he wore a dress one time, and I heard he wore foundation and blush for that interview, too. False. That's not true. Au naturel. That's all I needed to woo Bill Leroy in his fourth and final collegiate campaign. Inning winning run on first base. Noah Bridges pinch runs for Jackson Olsen. And it's 6 2 2 time. Delano brings in Akuf, Baber, and Hampton. And the four of them in sync. The patented crab dance, the finishing flourish. And Garrett back in the count. It's one and one. The first 6 2 2 of Garrett Delano's season this year and he nails the strike as well there goes bridges for second throw from ball home who's got a cannon perfect but he didn't have a chance in the world the pride of four oaks north carolina as fast as you're legally allowed to make a human being in the tar, tar heel state who's been training for speed his whole life got a parachute when he's about eight years old said it really helped him 
perfect his running form as that one's chopped above Delano. Baber goes between his legs. What a way to grab his 35th trick play of the tour. A bold trick play from Dustin Baber there at second base, but nonetheless gets the out for the party animals there and really just wasn't going to have a great shot at trying to get the lead runner there at third, especially considering how fast Bridges is. Good decision to go across the diamond and make the throw. So the inning winning run, 90 feet away, Bridges just did a backflip while leading off third off screen. And DR Meadows grabs his fifth walk off of the tour. We are knotted at two points apiece with six innings in the books. A heck of a ball game we've got on our hands. The Bananas run through the stands to celebrate their second point of the night. And Zach Phillips and Adam Virant wheeling out a resident rodeo clown. The Joy Oklahoma native. Wolf. Mr. Matt Wolf introduced by his fellow Sooner State man, Tyler Gillum. The two of them grew up battling every year in varsity baseball and then playing together every summer in Legion ball. Wolf a couple years behind Gillum. Ended up at East Central University in Tyler's first year as a grad assistant. And now Wolfie in his third world tour. He's been terrific here so far this year. This is his fifth appearance on the world tour and we saw him enter last night's game at second base and then come on the mound to throw a buddy pitch with Zach Phillips and recorded one of the two strikeouts you see on screen. And for Matt Wolf, he hasn't allowed a ball four sprint this season, something you love to see. And he's got six ground outs compared to just one fly it on the season. Really masterful job keeping this ball on the ground. Pretty important against these party animals. Wolf, he comes in with a little less than 50 minutes on our clock with only three innings left to play. This game is flying. <laughs> Quick look into the party animals dugout. Look out, Avery Hughes. What is going on? <laughs> Cameras flying all over the place. Because Tanner Thomas is ripping off his jersey. Bill Leroy will do the same. All of Tanner Chicken Tender 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 Thomas's teammates also going tarps off. Yeah, I thought it was Tanner Tarps off Tarps off Tarps off Thomas. You'll have to argue with Reginald Horton on that one. Huh. He's flexible. Six, seven, eight for the animals here. <laughs> Wolfie one-ups. Mr. Thomas drops his pants. Now pulls the overalls back up. 360s that one, two-seamer down and out. Unlike the majority of banana ball pitchers who have Somewhere between three and five pitches for the most part. Wolf over 30 pitches in his arsenal. That one finds the barrel of Tanner Thomas. But Reese Alexiotis in front of the track will haul it in for out number one. Excellent piece of hitting from Tanner Thomas considering, I mean, these trick pitches from Matt Wolf really mess up your timing as a batter. Nonetheless, Tanner staying on that pitch, but just unfortunately, Hitting it to Reese Alexiotis, who was perfectly positioned, I would say, out there in right field. It was Jordan Hussein. One for two on the night. Scored the inning winning run in the fifth for the Animals as they jumped out in front two points to one before the Bananas won the sixth and evened it back up. Wild stuff there from Wolf. A plethora of tricks on that one pitch, and he will lob in the 3 0. Ephis gets the top of the zone. And he's battled back into this thing. Count is full on a guffawing Jordan Hussein. Wolf goes with a little bit of an Ephus, then goes with the straight fastball, trying to speed up the bat of Jordan Hussein. And as Wolf tries to throw that one running off the mound to the right side, it will miss inside to Jordan Hussein and be just a one baseball for sprint. The first ball for sprint in the young career 
Uh, the kid out of Houston, Texas. Broke his fourth and fifth metacarpal in live at bats the weekend before he reported for Banana Ball Spring Training this year. So it was a delayed start to his career, but boy, has he been great since he's gotten to play. EJ is going to take this one to the bag himself. Takes care of Bronson Ballholm, the donut hitter. 0 for 3, no strikeouts. So no donuts courtesy of Duncan yet for the full capacity crowd. Instead, a couple ground outs and a line out for the party animals. Catcher and down to a knee. Goes the party animals second baseman, Dustin Baber. One for two on the night with a pair of barrels. And has been hitting far better after he chugs a brewski than in the opposite occasion on his at-bats. He has a 261 batting average after a beer chug, and we've even seen him collect a double after a fire pitch after chugging a beer. Quick 2-0 count. There's the 360. That ball smoked out to left, but Showtime's got a beat on it. And Crosby there for out number three. Wolf allows the sprint, but strands Hussein. And he now has four scoreless innings across his world tour. His, his buddy Philly will pop out of the barrel, and Wolf will walk this thing off the field while we salute all the service members, both past and present, here in historic Grayson Stadium. All of us here in Bananas Television, pass that on to all you folks joining us in virtual Banana Land. Josh Tulevsky, Biko Scala, thank you so much for spending your Big Tiger Friday with us. It has come, that special time in the night, my dear friend, to give away a pair of shoes courtesy of our dearest of friends over at Zappos. You have to hit the link in the description or the comment section here on YouTube. And then when it says buzzword, after this drum roll, you'll hear what to type. <laughs> Magic. Magic is our special word this evening. I would say tonight has been magical. Really magical game overall. Couldn't agree more. And part of the beauty of our young sport is that last night we saw an absolute bludgeoning from the party animals. Tonight, the pitchers on both sides have been stupendous, and we are cruising through six and a half innings Already, already to the bottom of the seventh. It's really a tale of two games. Yeah, I mean, we're on pace. I mean, we are looking at a possible new fastest game between the Bananas and Party Animals at this current moment. True. It'll really help if Bill Leroy, who's leading off this bottom of the seventh, can spark some magic at the plate for the Nanners. In total, the game will have to get through nine innings before an hour and 35 minutes pass. It was... The 12th game on this tour. The Sunday day game in Jacksonville, Florida. The quickest in Bananas and Party Animals history. The second fastest banana ball game of all time. 2-3-4 for the Nanners here. Change up there from Delano misses in. Leroy ahead 3-1. He's 2-1 for one on the night. That's impossible. He's one for two, and he will stay that way. He earns his eighth ball for sprint compared to just six strikeouts. He has always been so good in the sprint to strikeout department and immediately pinch run for by Malachi Mitchell, who will get out on the bags for the second time tonight. Yeah, with Bill Roy, just the second batter at the top of this banana's order makes a lot of sense. Pinch run Malachi Mitchell and Try and pull ahead in this points department. And of course, Malachi already running for Bill tonight, and he'll advance on a wild pitch getting away from Bronson Ballholm. Yeah, flash ran for Leroy after Bill's single in the fourth. It was the same here after the sprint to kick off the seventh. And one pitch into his time on the bases. He's up to second after the erratic offering from Delano. This one struck well into right center, Hampton has a beat on it, will heave this thing to third. He didn't have a chance to get flash. What a cannon though from Reese Lightning. Slightly offline 
But besides that, a beauty to Hussein. I mean, when you're throwing the ball that hard from center field, oftentimes it's going to be just a little offline from your target. But nonetheless, just shows you why Reese Hampton's such a respected outfielder for the party animals and also just the burning speed of Malachi Mitchell on the base pass. The party animals getting into Michael Deeb's walk up. Walking on sunshine. Now outcast blaring. So fresh, so clean. One of my wrestling walk ups at Sargates High School back in the day. Used it for a full year, all four matches. That's, that's amazing. Went 4 0. Second humble brag of the broadcast for Beacon. Do you remember the first, Josh? I snuck it in there. The game was flying early on. Is it about your baseball career? <laughs> Had I'm fun. on fire tonight. Oh is it about your on-base percentage? <laughs> no, I just, just dropped it. It's talking about D.R. Meadows getting burned on the Skull Triple. Just snuck in. All-state center fielder in baseball. I didn't mention that I was sixth team. <laughs> 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 it was five center fielders ahead of me. Humble brag nonetheless. Anything <laughs> works. <laughs> You know, I, I need to validate my expertise on how hard it is to judge those liners straight at you in center. How about Michael Deeb? Second walk-off of the ball game, his 10th of the tour. He ties Dan Obers for the season lead. And the Bananas jump back out in front. They lead 3-2. to two and We'll celebrate with a little wipeout-inspired celebration as Philly starting to go far too fast takes out Lewigs. And it is just Alexiades for Ziegler. Super Reese survives until he gets a pool noodle to the face. That is a dangerous double sweeper from Zach Phillips. Up next, we'll see the, uh, the, ba the banana hammocks obstacle make their way uh, into a game. That's a fact. Big balls after that. So the Nanners led the game one to nothing, trailed two to one. Now have walked off the sixth and the seventh and are back out in front three to two as they hand the ball off to Austin Krzminski, the former Los Angeles Angels minor leaguer. And somewhere in this stadium, when we watch Krem warm up, Ryan Rodriguez, there he is! All right, indeed, doing his best Freddie Mercury. The comparison look, looks wise are honestly scary, and he nails the impersonation there vocally, too. His cadence is, is really what does it. He is, he's clearly done his, uh, his YouTube scouting, I would say. We got a quick peek at Chris Monster's numbers on this young tour, the man out of Roswell, Georgia. Got banged up a couple times early on, but there's a reason why he made it up to AAA in Salt Lake City in the Angels organization and then was signed by the Chicago Cubs after that as well. He has unbelievable stuff. He's been averaging 93 miles an hour with his fastballs. Trackman had that first one at 91. He has a wipeout slider and a devastating circle change as well. And last time Krem appeared in the banana ball game, recorded a one minute and 40 second min minutes per inning mark and it's the fastest of his young banana ball career and his first sub two minute MPI as well. Overpowers Swan there, under the leg. From Jackson Olsen over to first base, keeps both feet planted on that one. A new variety on what has become his favorite trick play from second base. He is on an unreal pace when it comes to the trick plays. I mean, was set up in a very comfortable position, didn't have to move too much while receiving that ball. And anytime you have that much time, it's very easy to try for a trick play, and especially at the second base position. And that's why we've seen the uptick this season from Olsen. Party Animals order flips on its head. To the top we go. And on the 0-2, Hampton pops this one up left side. Howell takes control of the situation. And defensively for Hosley, who started the game at third. And speaking of speed, two quick outs for Krzminski as Brayson Bloomer steps up to the dish. Yeah, we're only one minute and 22 seconds into this eighth inning for Austin Krzminski. And 
really nice to have a setup guy get you three outs in a quick fashion and you maintain a one point lead going into a final inning or well into the bottom of the eighth. Pair of sliders there to Bloomer, both of them at 85 miles an hour according to Trackman. I mean, that is a no joke pitch. He's ahead 0-2 on the Animals DH. He was able to spoil that fastball. Once again, fired in at 91. Krasminski, a 2017 Collegiate Banana. Earlier than anyone else on the world tour, his catcher, Bill Leroy, of course, a 2018 Banana, has called Savannah home ever since. Krasminski, though, after a couple weeks in his first campaign in Banana Land was signed as a free agent. After the 2017 draft by the Angels, nice scoop there by Cox. He goes between the legs. Second trick play of the night for the Glove Magician, 48th of the tour. And an awful efficient one, two, three frame from Chris Monster. Well, after Matt Wolf had a two minute and 34 second, seventh inning for the Bananas, Austin Krasminski matches him second by second there the exact same time and does it in one less pitch as well. How about them apples? Princess Potassia leaving the great folks here in the 9-1-2 and the tried and true tradition of yellow. This one not as ancient and storied as Hey Baby. Bring child of our director of entertainment, Zach Frangelo, in 2022, and it caught on like wildfire. Haven't missed a game since, even during the day. Simply too special to bypass. Archer and Kellogg feeling the love. The sentiment is that we are all yellow in Banana Land. Even the Party Animals fans, in the middle of the eighth inning, they can, they can feel a little yellow. Princess Potassia, it is your first time in this role on the mic, I'm sure. It's gotta make you feel pretty special about everybody in Banana Land. As I suspected. She barely let you finish the question, man. <laughs> she's, she's quick to the jump, but I don't blame her. It's her first time out there. Feeling the love for that yellow jitters. Correct, <laughs> correct. And I can be long-winded. Not too ashamed to you say that. Golly, do I love to monologue. Big, <laughs> big part of my career choice right there. I enjoy to gab. Luckily, there's a job out there in the world. You can do it, and people will pay you for it. Unbelievable. Novel idea. <laughs> no way. Yeah. <laughs> Get real. This is my fifth year where they were doing it. My first two years, my seventh year actually, truly broadcasting games. I don't count any of my silly business in high school as anything legitimate. Four straight bad ones to Howell. And Gabe in his first plate appearance of the night is going to slam the brakes about 40% of the way between first base and second. He'll take a one base sprint. And just like that, the inning winning run is aboard. My first two years of broadcasting, I was paid zero dollars, but I did get a lot of chicken fingers, hot dogs, hamburgers. That rocked. Not just before the game, but after them too. Those are the kind of perks that are simply priceless. Can't put a number on that. Precious goods. <laughs> yeah. That one grazes the outside corner after five straight balls to start the bottom of the eighth. Heleno offers up a pitcher's pitch, gets the call from Chapman and goes to the cutter there, fouled away by Jones Jr. One for two on the night, a line out. And then a single his last time up. Off balance, taps it to Delano. his only play is at first, he bounces it there. It's his second trick play of the outing, fifth of the tour.
What a spot for Stilts. Pinch hitting for Super Reese Alexiades. Dakota Albritton with the chance to notch his first walk off of the tour. Yeah, he had four across last year's world tour. Still looking for that first hit, and it would come at a pretty perfect time. Howell at second base runs well, and I feel like Ray Ortega coaching third base would give him a pretty aggressive send, wanting to create that special moment for Stilts at the plate. Sure, he's hitless, but in nine plate appearances, he has three sprints. Check that, one sprint and three hit by pitches. One hit by pitch off the tour lead as he nubs this one into center field. It's going to fall. Stilts busting it down the line. We'll get to first safely. And Jason Swan is not covering the first base bag. Howell comes around to score, and it's a walk-off for Stilts. Unless Vincent Chapman is calling some kind of interference on Stilts, saying that he got in the way of Jason Swan at first. Never mind! <laughs> it's a walk-off for Stilts, his first of 2024! Saved that one, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Three outs to take home the dub! The party animals are trying to score two to tie or three to take the lead. So Bananas Nation, we need your energy. We need you to clap those hands and make some noise. Welcome to the final inning. We've been talking about how Chase Aka came into this ball game with zero errors, which is astonishing across 22 plus games at shortstop. Son of a gun, there it is. An errand throw to an unoccupied first base. It was well up the line anyhow. Stilts will not get an RBI on the play, but he does notch his first walk off of the year. Five now. Check that six in his banana ball career, dating back to the 2022 Summer Series. And secure the victory through the meat of this animal's lineup. Skull, Cornet, and Aka. Three, four, and five due to swing it. Here in the top of the ninth inning, the Bananas lead four points to two. They've won three straight innings. We're down two to one after five, but have walked off the sixth, seventh, and eighth. And looking to pull back ahead by three games against the Animals. And it's really all thanks to getting the leadoff runner on in all three of those innings with Eric Jones Jr., or should I say Jackson Olsen, reaching with the single in the sixth, and then Leroy and Howell earning sprints in the seventh and eighth, respectively. Pitcher's pitch on 3-0. and oh. Osley still in this count. Monster hack and a miss from Skoll. And the count goes full. He tripled back in the first, a two-base sprint in the fourth. Rounded out his last time. Watches the changeup, just barely missed the outside corner. He's going to test the banana sprint defense, and he'll beat it. He's in standing with his second two-base sprint of the night, hit of the night, his 14th sprint on the tour. He only trails his buddy Reese Hampton in that category. And you could see Hosley on the pitcher's mound with his hands on his knees there. Really wanted that call from Vincent Chapman. Unfortunately, did not go his way, so Party Animals trying to rally with Dalton Cornett facing Hosley, who, of course, Dalton went, hit two home runs against the Bananas closer last season. Trackman agreed with Vincent Chapman's call on that Vulcan changeup, by the way, to vindicate the home plate umpire. Had it a, about an inch and a half outside. Great take by Skoll. And Cornett spanks this one to left center. Meadows range is over to grab it for out number one. 0 for 4 night for DC3, but a couple line outs. He has struck the ball well. Now Chase Aka. 
Behind 0-1. Hosley, a three-pitch pitcher. That's the fastball right there, about 90 to 91. We'll get up to 93 miles an hour with it. Is that one past the backhanded diving attempt by Howell into left? Skull will score easily. Acuff barreling towards second. The tag in time. A strike from Robert Anthony Cruz. And the party animals challenging the call made by Chris Walker. An unsurprising challenge for the party animals. Still having one in this ball game. It's the perfect time for them to use it. They're ready down on the field. We're ready in the booth. We look. And we'll need a tighter angle. Certainly bang, bang. We've got 30 seconds left on the replay. Golly. It's as tight as could be. If this is the only angle we've got, I'm not seeing enough to overturn this call on the field. I'm not seeing enough evidence. Fifteen seconds left on the challenge, neither am I. In fact, this it's, angle makes it look like the glove does nab his leg just a hair before he gets the foot on the I, bag. It's inconclusive evidence. Call cannot be overturned with that angle. Aggressive base running by Chase Acuff, a 2021 collegiate banana who experienced Tyler Gillum's green light special base running system firsthand. He would have been the game's tying run in scoring position with one out. Instead, Tanner Thomas represents the game tying run at the dish with the party animals down to their final out. And again, that is one heck of a play from Rack in left field, a guy who had barely any outfield experience prior to starting his career in banana ball. And now this is a guy they are playing night in and night out in left field and is showing up in a major ways defensively. That might have been one of the biggest play of his career. Quick 0-2 count on Tanner Thomas. 0 for 3 with the ground out and two fly outs tonight. Party Animals left fielder does have two home runs on this tour. He certainly has the pop to tie it. Great take there. And that's the pitch that has done Tanner Thomas in so many times, that breaking ball in the dirt. Now Hosley trying to go outside to Tanner Thomas. This one out to the fans, but this game will not end with a foul recording a catch to end the ball game. This is the 136th banana ball game ever played. That outcome has still only happened once as Hosley follows up the changeup with a heater. Thomas fouls it off. His former Bananas Collegiate teammate across the 18 and 19 seasons. And we'll get another one too. Cut and a foul tip. Just able to get a small piece of it as it bounces out of Leroy's mitt. Yeah, and Bill Leroy now has got to be hoping that that doesn't come back to bite him if Tanner Thomas is able to either reach, especially with an extra base hit, or even tie this game with a long ball of his own. Could really come back to bite them. That one smoked foul. Heck of a battle between Danny Hosley and Tanner Thomas with the fate of this game hanging in the balance. Seven pitches already in this plate appearance between the two. Hosley trying to end it here on pitch number eight to Tanner Thomas. We'll get a ninth offering. Crackman had the fastball at 90. So tough to adjust to after the Vulcan changeup sits around 78, 79 miles an hour. Here comes pitch number nine. Hosley gets him. The changeup is the pitch of choice. And the bananas squeak by. 
on a one point margin, four to three. They are 13 and 10 on the season. The animals, the inverse of that. And tomorrow night will be the rubber match of this three game set here in the hostess city of the South. An impressive win from the Savannah Bananas tonight, rallying in inning six through eight for points. And that was enough to get them the one point lead in this one as Danny Hosley able to nail it down with help from his defense, especially Rack in left field, helping save this ball game. Hosley improves to eight of nine in his save opportunities. And as Bill Leroy shouts out the boys down on the field, we will pop up into the broadcast booth to close this puppy down. Welcome inside, along with Josh Tolevsky on Biko Scala. Thank you again for spending this special Big Tiger Friday with us here in Banana Land. Two straight wins for the Animals. Their offense was unbelievable last night, but the Bananas pitching staff, starting with Ryan Kellogg, finishing with Danny Hosley, shuts down a powerful offense. Yeah, and it was a good night overall from the Bananas. Got really solid stuff early on in this ballgame. I feel like a lot of the times we've seen the Bananas succeed in ball games is because the pitching is able to shut down the party animals early in games rather than allow them to jump out to a one or two point lead. And the Bananas, they've continued to rally in late game situations all tour long. They do it once again, again, inning six, seven, and eight, they get the leadoff man on, and it pays dividends for them, especially considering Tyler Gillum has an aggressive green light base running system that helps them win a lot of these banana ball games. Speed is what kills at the end of the day, and as always, they feel very comfortable putting Danny Hosley in in the ninth inning in these situations, and saved by Robert Anthony Cruz in left field, making one of the best throws we've seen on this year's world tour. Yeah, unbelievable play by Rack there to take the game's tying run off the bases and Chase Acuff, who knocked in Skull after he started the inning with the sprint and Cruz with a bullet of a one hopper. Nice play by Jackson Olsen grabbing that ball. Very quick tag. Live, I thought Acuff was gonna scoot underneath it. Then we saw on the replay, he kind of got kicked up by the dirt. His leg kind of met Mr. Olsen's tag and son of a gun, the Bananas do squeak by with the victory. Also an amazing play by our director of marketing, Kara Heater, crawling under this thing. Great work by you, Josh. Your concentration immaculate. You didn't even stumble. Uh, you know, I just try to stay locked and tapped in like Reginald Horton would want me to be, right. hold myself accountable and do a higher standard. And the pitchers did that tonight as well. We've got to show them some love. Seven innings were thrown tonight between the Bananas and the Party Animals below three minutes. And this game ended in one hour and 39 minutes. It's the second fastest Bananas versus Party Animals game of all time. The quickest we've ever seen between the two arch rivals in Banana Ball right here in historic Grayson Stadium. And as I mentioned at the top, starts with Ryan Kellogg. He threw three scoreless, handed the ball to Jared Donaldson, who the party animals were able to capitalize on a little bit of uh, an erratic evening from Donnie. They notched points in the fourth and the fifth, but then the Bananas score in the sixth, seventh, and eighth. They retake the lead, add an insurance point in that eighth inning. Very important because then it gave Hosley a little wiggle room, and he uses that to his advantage. Skull does score one run, instantly turns into a point in the ninth, as are the rules of our young sport. But Hosley bears down, wins a nine-pitch battle with Tanner Thomas with the strikeout, and the Bananas now 13 wins across 23 games. They will look to extend that, win this little series tomorrow night, where we will have 7 p.m. first pitch here Eastern, 6.30 p.m. We will kick off the pregame show as always. And then next week we head back to the Durham Bulls Athletic Park DBAP, as the kids call it, for what will be a, a great return trip to uh, the Tar Heel State and a really fantastic venue for Banana Bowl. Yeah, excited to go to Durham Bulls Athletic Park for sure and excited for the rubber game tomorrow between the, the Bananas and Party Animals. And again, we've got to remember the Bananas 3-1 and one this season in rubber matches. We expect uh, Sean Fluke, of course, Mr. Undeniable, to be on the mound tomorrow night with the little series on the line for the animals. For the Bananas, I would wager, wager uh, Ethan Scooge. You have any other thoughts? Uh, it's just going to be one of those interesting matchups 
that's where a little bit of a soft tosser and Sean Flute yeah. throwing a lot of breaking balls. A little bit. And it's the exact opposite that the Bananas are throwing out against the party annals. Ethan Scooge, he's going to be trying to light up that radar gun. Yeah, Mr. Worldwide is consistently 92 to 94 miles an hour with the heater. He can touch 98 if he's really feeling spicy. Okay, before we shut this broadcast down, we've got to shout out our cast and crew. And we have to give away a pair of shoes courtesy of our dearest of buddies over at Zappos. A drum roll, please, Josh. <laughs> David Nace. David Nace, congratulations on your new pair of shoes. They could be Hoka's. They could be something else because Zappos, they sell a plethora of things you can toss on your feet if you like to do such a thing. I personally am a shoes wearer. Yeah, I'm a shoes wearer yeah, too. A couple shoes guys here in the broadcast booth, as are his entire cast and crew. Uh, that would start with Emerson Elmgren, the Iron Horse of BTV, holding down the first base camera, and across the diamond, Lex Fowler becoming awful dependent over there as well. On high homes, Ben Barks. He is Ben Nuff. We all know that. He has been terrific. On the low home, Jackson Hamilton. Always awesome to have him here in Grayson Stadium. On center field, up on the scaffolding, Jeff Glover. Good work, Jeff, out there on an important in camera our utility hope peters getting all kinds of folks mic'd up this evening and on the wireless cam justin gordon flying all over this ballpark in a terrific fashion down in the control room in our old beloved office kylie sadamka our director tonight calling all the shots she is as good as they come as is our technical director mr griffin ellis a man who precedes even i here in btv on the replay kwanzi it's one name you know him you love him but he's given you a whole lot of shots uh, to get a gander at. Again, on the audio, Katie Duke dominating the ones and the twos. The score bug handled perfectly by Michael Basista. The graphics run by Julia Massey. The statistics being updated on said graphics controlled by Mr. Mikey O'Connor. They're the best graphics duo you can find in the Northern Hemisphere. Our moderators in the chat, Cole by Underscore and Scott Thompson, and a special thanks to our video legend and the Italian rap scallion himself, Mr. Chris Sachi, and uh, a special thanks to our director of marketing, Kara Heater, for crawling under the camera here in expert fashion as well. Okay, wrapping this thing up, thank you for slapping a mic on and playing Jenga with us, Mr. Jackson Olson and Ryan Cox, and uh, a big thank Thank you as well for, uh, what else did we do, Josh? To Bill Roy for Ow! giving you a breather right. up here in the booth. I forgot because I was just staring at the ceiling for the entire top of the sixth inning. Uh, Bill, excellent work on the mic, buddy. And uh, thank you so much to the straw that stirs the drink here in BTV. Mr. Chad Reese, our coordinating producer, as well as you, Sir Josh Talevsky, our color commentator and statistical savant. Biko Scala, there's nobody else I would rather spend a big Tiger Friday with. That warms the heart right there. For our executive producers, Emily, Jesse, and Carrie Cole, as well as Jared Orton, I am indeed Biko Scala. As he says, we'll see you tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. Pre-game, 7 p.m. first pitch. Nanners win this one 4-3. The series is on the line manana. We will see you there, and of course, we'll, we'll see you later!